why does education, I, like that's kind of a, <laughs> if not education, why bother breathing? <laughs> you kind of have those stereotypical Harvard thoughts. Like it's Harvard, like do I belong here? When I was first coming here and got accepted, I was kind of thinking, do they know that I'm not a teacher? The land of the elite is what I thought I was coming to. I have a tattoo. Can you see it? <laughs> it's actually a tribal butterfly. It's in honor of my student Samantha Brigham. She had the most powerful spirit of anyone I'd ever met in my life. I, I kind of, in many ways, wanted to be more like her because um, she was the most honest person I've ever met. Probably my main passion is, is soccer. I am the new assistant superintendent for family and community engagement in Boston Public Schools. My work at Brown is kind of across the board. I'm the president of the Alumni Association. When I became president, I started a six-year term on the board of trustees. I moved to Zimbabwe and uh, began working for a program called Grassroots Soccer that was just starting up. Uh, and is a program that uses a soccer-based curriculum to teach young people about AIDS uh, in Africa. I did not envision myself staying in education. I, at one point, pictured myself as CEO up in the corner office, you know, that whole thing. I decided to come to ed school because I felt like I understood that I am committed to education. There's significant opportunity for leadership and impact in this field, but I needed to really understand the content and the kind of meat um, of education in order to be an effective leader within the field. The bagel capital of the world is in Mattoon, Illinois, and it's my hometown. I play the musical saw. Yeah, I, I was the lead singer in a rock band. You can almost bend it all the way end to end and it'll, if you let go, it maintains its integrity. Love, I get so lost. Sometimes. I was born in Fargo, North Dakota. Yay! This is mine. It's a General Littman. It's kind of what the standard. Actually, if you watch ER too, you'll see the they all carry legitimate Littman stethoscopes on TV. So I went to work for a small uh, home care nursing agency and was working with pregnant women to teach them how to take care of their children and foster development and take care of themselves at the same time, which is a very important piece. There was a student, a patient, sometimes my disciplines cross, um, who was, she was 15 years old and she was HIV positive and she had a baby who was HIV positive and it was actually the baby who was on my caseload, um, not the mom. And it was through that experience that I, that I knew I wanted to to stay on the prevention side and had always known that I would go back someday um, to get a doctorate and was working for the Little Sisters in that role when I applied here um, to the Human Development Program. <laughs> it's not about changing the whole world and that on one given day talking to one parent in a <laughs> manner in which they understand about their child who's connected to a ventilator or not doing well in school or know, is, is being recommended for psychiatric care, that's a small victory and that's a small, a small step forward in what I consider to be my place in all of this. Can I make a difference? I hope so. I try. Every day. Uh, I think the difference is what is the scale of the difference you want to make? We talk about toilets with anybody. This past summer, I was actually working on a microfinance project uh, with a professor, and every school that I visited had this interest in toilets, and so I started asking the teachers, I said, well, can you show me the toilets? And I always noticed that, you know, there was one, but it was relatively clean, and it was nice, and then I realized it's actually the staff toilet. So when I looked at the data, I found that about 60% of schools didn't have toilets, and only half of them were usable. So then I started asking the girls. Um, I said, can you take me to where you go to the bathroom? Where do you use the toilet? And consistently, they would take me to the field, they'd take me to the bush, they'd take me out in the open, or they'd say, I don't go, I hold it during the day because I'm too scared. You don't have a private, safe, clean place to go to the bathroom. 
you're more likely to potentially drop out of school. You're not going to be able to concentrate in class in this, this particular project. Looking at latrines and sanitation and, and access to water is just part of this larger issue of making sure kids actually have access to equal opportunities. They're smart. Most of them are the age of my children. Passionate. People are cool. And they're driven. Just talk to them for five minutes about what they do. You want to walk away and do their work. I had a friend named Mario who had Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And one of the last things he asked me before he died was to watch out for his brother, Darius, who had also become very good friends with. Darius is pretty much the most amazing person I've ever met. He inspired a, a group of friends, including myself, to take him out of Athens for the first time across the country to where he saw the ocean for the first time in the mountains. And then in California, the goal of the trip was to try and get his wheelchair pimped on Pimp My Ride. Yeah, it was nuts. It was dirty. It was fun. It was uh, a lot of sleepless nights on the road. It was, it was a blast. The DVD itself raises $17 per sale for Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy Research. And Darius has been very clear in that it's his goal you know, as he turns 19, the same age as his brother was when he died, to sell a million DVDs and celebrate his brother's life and his life in the name of the lives of the next generation. My classmates that I didn't know before coming here and became great, great friends with across the course of the year were forming a business, trying to use uh, films to motivate learning. So I feel, um, you know, our crew just got bigger and three new members are from the ed school. <laughs> I love kids. I have three children and seven grandsons. I love uh, how enthusiastic kids are about the silliest things. Seven beautiful, amazing grandsons. I don't know what to say about kids. Kids are amazing. Yeah, kids are great. <laughs> yeah, sure, I love kids, but not really. <laughs> I bet you no one gave you that answer, right? <laughs> I'm passionate about college going. Yes, primary school, secondary school is important for education and everything else, but I spent my whole childhood going like, I gotta go to college, gotta go to college, gotta go to college, get to college, great. Ended up there for two years and then my parents went bankrupt. Truly tumultuous. So I ended up taking a year and a half off and working full time and working like a lunatic and really starting to reassess how important it was for me to, to go to college and what that meant. And the only reason why I got to go back was because my parents won the lottery. Good Lord, that should not be why anyone goes to college. Like, what is that? You know, that's craziness. And at that point I realized, you know what, this college thing, this college going thing is kind of important. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that higher education was where I wanted to make my mark, that it made a huge difference for me and my family, and that I had to give back to it as a way of returning the favor. I can imagine me doing very different things in the field of education, which is why I'm interested in entrepreneurship, but I can't imagine leaving the field. Everyone genuinely wants to help each other reach a greater good. I thought that that would be here, but the biggest surprise was that it was the biggest thing here. I'm interested in education. Someone else is interested in business. Someone else is interested in healthcare. Like, I'm so glad that we all have so many different interests because then we can all make a difference in all these important parts of the world. So. Being able to interact with, with like-minded people from the Kennedy School and from the School of Public Health it was really important for me. I feel like I've got skills to do exactly what I want. I sat down and I said, you're going to have a whole year just to think and reflect. Boy, was I mistaken. I had a whole year to think fast, reflect fast. Every second has been worth it. Without education, we're never going to be able to figure out environmental problems. Without education, you're never going to be able to figure out poverty, social injustice, inequality, all of it. It's the silver bullet. Everything comes down to education.